Hi, Roy Williams with Airframe Components, and welcome back to episode two of the Blanik L13 modification program. Uh, this video is just kind of be an overview of the whole project. Uh, as you know, we had a uh, Blanik L13 uh, aircraft in here at the shop. We had three uh, members from the Blanik uh, Airframe team here at our facility. Uh, we brought them in for a week to train our guys on uh, how to modify the aircraft. Uh, as you know, we had a lot of uh, uh, barriers with uh, language, with a conversion from metric to U.S. standard, uh, working on a new aircraft, something we haven't done before on the Blanics, but uh, having everybody here for a week, a lot of activity, a lot of uh, problems, but uh, very smooth overall operation. Uh, different uh, shots we have here in this video, you'll be able to see the progress of uh, how uh, we went uh, through the week, but uh, overall a very good week and a very productive week. So we started, you got in here Saturday evening yeah. and uh, came out here Sunday afternoon, toured the facility, yeah. uh, saw the aircraft. So Monday morning we hit the ground running, started tearing everything apart. By Tuesday morning, we ran into a problem. Yeah. Very so, big problem. a very big problem. So, we have a set of wings right here off the first aircraft uh, for modification, and there is a requirement for dimensional uh, limits on the fastener holes for the wing attached fitting. Yeah. And how many fasteners are there in that fitting? Oh, no. About 20 or 20, so. 20, I, yeah. think, I think, I think, yeah. And they have a size limit on the hole. Yeah, I think uh, there's additional 12, uh, 12 bolts uh, with regard to old I. With the original yeah, fitting, the, the original, old fitting. Yes, yes, old fitting. And they have a dimensional limit, and we had quite a few holes that were beyond dimensional limit. Yeah. And this was something that had been in the incorporated in the spar right from the factory yeah. when this air and this aircraft is a 1966 yes yes 66 67 aircraft so an older aircraft and we ran into a problem with dimensional limits on the fasteners so we had to stop work on these particular wings uh, one of the other requirements for the inspection is a conductivity Con test yes testing the materials of the spar yeah and so these wings not only did not pass the dimensional limits of the fastener holes. But conductivity too. We failed conductivity, conductivity test also on both wings. So at this point, we are on a holding pattern on this particular set of wings, but not to fear, we had a second aircraft ready to go. So we brought the second set of wings in, opened those up, yes. and first thing we did was a dimensional check. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we check the conductivity and we check the diame uh, diameter of the holes and it's great. So the first thing we did then on the second set, check for the dimensional limits, yeah. check for conductivity. Those were good. So now we continue with those wings. Yeah. So a lot of procedures, yeah. not just changing a fitting, but a lot of other inspections going on inside the wing. Yes, of course. Uh, going on inside the fuselage. So the fuselage now, uh, we're going to change out the center bulkhead where the carry-through is. Yeah. So at the factory, uh, they actually split the fuselage in half. You have the forward cabin section, the aft tail cone section, yeah. changing out the complete bulkhead. So they have sent us fixtures to be copied, and those fixtures will provide alignment of the carry-through in the fuselage. Sure and then also fixtures for the wing fittings so that when the wing and the fuselage go back together, all pins are in alignment. Yeah. So it's good that we find problems like this now uh, instead of having a wing yeah, failure course, in flight. So here in the field, not having the factory jigs, uh, we have to come up with temporary fixtures for holding the fuselage. Uh, the first step is before dismantling the fuselage, doing symmetry checks, leveling checks to make sure that the fuselage is square. Yeah. 
Uh, once that is uh, determined to be good, yes. then we begin drilling the fuselage apart, splitting the front and back halves, yeah. and then the new bulkhead goes in. Uh, that is fastened in place to the structure. The fuselage is then placed back together, Correct. leveling and yes. symmetry checks made. Yes. And then this will be riveted together. Yeah. So here we are on Wednesday already, yeah. and the fuselage has come apart. Yes. The new bulkhead is in place. Yes. We've done all the symmetry checks, and we're ready for final fitment and fastening. Yeah, correct. So it, it goes fairly quickly. Uh, again, you know, we ran into a snag on this first set of wings here. Uh, we'll have some pictures here of the oversized fasteners, yeah. but uh, uh, yet to be determined... Uh, how we will proceed with the wings. Now, for instance, with this particular aircraft, 1966 aircraft, we are continuing with the modification of the fuselage. Yeah. We already had the fuselage split when we found the dimensional failure of the fasteners. Yeah. So now we were committed to the project <laughs> with the fuselage already being apart. So we have to continue with the fuselage, not knowing what we will do with the wings. But you were mentioning if the fuselage is modified, yeah. a new set of wings could be purchased. So it's almost a new airplane. And then at that point, it's essentially a new airplane yeah. with a 6,000 hour life, life yes. limit. Correct. Okay. Was there a original life limit on these aircraft in 1966? No, 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 no. Just conditional? Yes, it's called okay. conditional. So at this point, the owner has the option of purchasing new wings and then placing them on the modified fuselage, yeah. 6,000 hour life limit at that point, yes. uh, essentially a new aircraft. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have options. We haven't yet broached that uh, uh, topic with the owner yet, but uh, we will continue with the second aircraft. And so first thing uh, we wanted to do was bring those second set of wings in, check those fasteners. Oh, of course. Everything passed with that, so we yeah. will continue with the second aircraft now at this point. So that's all for today's episode of the Blanick L13 Modification Program. As you know, this will be a continuing learning process, uh, a refinement of the different processes, uh, more of an interaction between airframe components and Blanick. But uh, overall, I think we're off to a very good start for the modification program here in the United States.